You're listening to the Hog Sports Network Daily Podcast. Now, here's your host, Matt Jones. That's the first place we'll start. They're coming in our backyard, okay? And we didn't, last time we were out in our backyard, we didn't put up a really good fight. You got the best fan base in the world, and they're all going to be here because they know the importance of this rivalry. You didn't show them a good outing the last time you was there. I mean, we, we got our butts kicked. Here's the time we go out here tonight, we buckle up. We put our gear on tight, and we line up and take that field like Razorbacks take the field. And we're going to fight them for 60 minutes. Regardless of what the scoreboard says, when it's all over, they're going to know they were in a fight. And if we take care of the ball and we do the things we're supposed to do and play as a team, we're going to love the outcome. But I want to see some passion. Show up like you give a crap and go out there and fight. Give these fans what they come to see. You go out there and lay it on the line. That's what you do all that running in the summer for, lifting them weights, running in the cold. You go lay it on the line right now. You give it to them. You show up with some Razorback passion and pride and give them the fight of their life for 60 minutes. Let's go. That's what you <laughs> Does Sam have your number? <laughs> yeah, Sam's got my number. And then we're going to sing the fight song when we win. We're going to sit him back. That was Marvin Kasten uh, yesterday at the Hogs Illustrated Sports Club. Whenever I asked him, I said, if you had the chance to give the team a pregame speech before they played Texas on Saturday, uh, what would you tell them? Ethan, I haven't played football in 25 years, and I, I think I would put a helmet on for Marvin. Yeah. He, <laughs> that he's, was got, he's got that uh, he's got that inspirational uh, – I mean, he, he gets you ready. He channeled his inner Houston nut for that. Yeah, I know. You can tell he comes from that that tree. You know, we uh, like when you're at the games this year, they will play the Houston nut uh, pregame speech from before his first game going into the fourth quarter. They play it, and they got this nice little video montage that goes with it. Like, they ought to play Marvin at kickoff <laughs> yeah. something like that on Saturday. It's funny because the, the, uh, that clip of Houston nut, it's like been – kind of cool for most of the games then the the Ole Miss game you're just like oh boy yeah maybe 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 yeah. saddle that one yeah I must say uh, yeah because it wasn't it wasn't much of a game in the fourth quarter not at all by the time the fourth quarter got there uh so that was Marvin Caston at the Hogs Illustrated Sports Club if you want to hear the whole thing uh you can go back to our podcast yesterday uh we've got that whole speech it was a panel with Marvin and Jason Allen and Lindy Lindsay former Razorbacks who have been part of teams who played and beat Texas we talked to them about the rivalry we talked to them about this year's team. It was a fun discussion um, up at our Hogs Illustrated Sports Club. And listening to Marvin, I think the the one big takeaway that I that I took away from just listening to that was that there are people who still really care. And, you know, even it, it's easy to get beat down by – and this is a five-and-four football team, by the way. Let's, let's not act like this is, you know, Razorback football of the past. This is a different kind of year. But they lost Ole Miss in a, a very unflattering way a couple of weeks ago. The point being, though, there are people who still are very passionate and still very fiery about Razorback football who believe that they've got a chance to beat Texas this week. I don't necessarily think that they've got a chance to beat them. I think Texas is uh, a much better team, and I think Texas is going to have to make a lot of mistakes for Arkansas to, uh, to, to be able to have a chance in this game. But you know, listening to him, it, it's, it's refreshing to hear somebody who's got you know that, that strong passion about Razorback football because – uh, that can get drowned out by the noise sometimes, and I, I think it does. Yeah, I don't think that you spend four years of your life playing for a program that gave you a chance. Marvin to played play five for, or five I, yeah. in his case. You don't you don't spend that much time playing for a program and then lose that care. Just it, it, you keep it with you, I think, for the rest of your life probably. Um, so, but it was it was great to hear him all fired up. He definitely. Uh, he knows how to he knows how to give a nice little pep talk. When we talked to Peyton Hillis at the sports club a few weeks ago, I remember one of the things he said was that he felt, and I think he said that other players feel this way too, is that there are not enough Arkansas people in the building, people who um, understand and, and love the program uh, the way that former players do. And I was thinking about this. Uh, there is no assistant coach on this staff who played at Arkansas, who grew up at Arkansas. Petrina was the head coach of the Razorbacks. He's got a love for the, the team. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Pittman, he grew up not long or not far from here over in Oklahoma. Uh, I think he's got a love for the team. There's, there's no doubt about that. But there's a difference between 
you know, just 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 having a, a, an appreciation for the team and actually having been part of the team. You know, like a Tim Horton, a Houston Nutt, a, a Barry Lunny Jr. And you can go on and on throughout the you know the years that, that Arkansas James Shebest was on Houston staffs and Danny Nutt obviously was on his staffs and again you can just go on and on. Having someone who played the game, a Harold Horton and Lewis Campbell, and having those types of people in your building, uh, I feel like that could make a, a huge difference to Arkansas football. Probably so. Um, and then also just the number, I think when you look at the roster, how many kids are from the state. It's dwindling. Um, yeah, and it's just, I don't think people, especially people that are born and raised in the state, ever want to lose that that um, flavor to the to the program where you have those Arkansas guys, uh, coaches, players that deeply do care, that grew up caring, um, because I think that as much as gets put into NIL, like the the talent disparity that NIL can create, um, there is something to be said for players that deeply care and can maybe um, that want to and drive overcome a lack of perhaps talent. So we're off and running Arkansas and Texas tomorrow. It's an 11 a.m. kickoff on ABC. Joe Tessator, Jesse Palmer, Katie George, they'll all be on the call. Texas number three in this week's college football playoff poll. They're eight and one overall, four and one in the SEC. Arkansas five and four and three and three in conference play. The Razorbacks, they can still clinch a bowl game this week against Texas. Uh, but it just seems like, and, and I feel like I've usually got a pretty good, you know, finger on the pulse of things. I just don't feel a lot of excitement and energy around town this week about this game. I think that there's, uh, you know, the, maybe a prevailing thought that Arkansas didn't have much of a chance in this game. And, yeah, I think that I expect the stadium to be full when they kick off at 11 or maybe a little after tomorrow because it's an early game. Uh, but, but I think there's probably going to be a lot of people who are going to go there, you know, hoping and, and wishing that Arkansas is going to win, but probably in their back of their mind thinking that this is a long shot. I think the Ole Miss game took a lot of juice out of this one. Um, just the, the opportunity Arkansas had to create some momentum going into it. Um, and it's it's not necessarily that they lost. It's the way that they got beat. Yeah, it was it just It was hel- helpless kind of. I mean, just especially whenever Ole Miss had the ball. And I think that just took a lot of, you know, people loved uh, – what keeps fans going is holding on to hope <laughs> and hoping. And I just don't think – I think people right now aren't even able to convince themselves of why Arkansas is going to beat Texas. Uh, and that can – yeah, maybe kick off – you know, the game gets, gets kicked off. I, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people there. There's no doubt about it. People are going to show up for this game. And maybe the team gives them a reason to have some hope early. That's what they got to do, uh, I think, tomorrow is, uh, you know, give fans a reason to – to really get into it early. There's something to be said about a bye week and the feeling of a team going into the bye week and how that affects the enthusiasm around the next game. They beat Tennessee. They go into a bye week. Uh, Pittman's all over you know, ESPN. He's on, he's on Feinbaum. He's on SEC Network. He's uh, you know, kind of the toast of the town for two weeks, and the team is. And you know, there's a, a huge enthusiasm for a night game when they come back out of the bye week against LSU. Now, they didn't play well that night, but there was a lot of enthusiasm in the building uh, you know, for the first three quarters of that game until LSU started to pull away. And then you know, you lose the game to Ole Miss, and, it just, and I guess basketball season has started in, the, in that vacuum, and so that, that has a little bit of an effect. But um, I just, it's, it's a totally different feeling being here. Uh, and and it's, it's unique in that you, know, you have a home game, bye week, home game, conference game on each side in October, and now you're having it again in November. Uh, but it, it's just got a totally different feeling uh, than it did a week ago. Ethan, uh, what did you write? You write the you write, you write the uh, keys, to, keys the to the game. All right. yep. Keys to keys the victory. game. Let's go over that. Arkansas, Texas this weekend. What, what's your number one key? I think anybody who doesn't start with secondary improvement, um, I mean, Ole Miss torched them. They, I mean, there was no other way to – put it almost just they were taking just deep vertical shots late, like in the second half up by a lot of scores because they knew they could just keep putting it on Arkansas they couldn't defend it if, if this was it felt like to me with Lane Kiffin like if if if, Ar- if they weren't going to score a touchdown Arkansas was going to hold them and get a pass interference because they just couldn't defend them deep so I think that that's where you got to look right away is Arkansas secondary has played its worst three games in consecutive games um mm-hmm. going back to LSU they got carved up with the short 
the short game, most of it. And then Mississippi State they piled up yards on them. And then we all know what Ole Miss did. Uh, so they, they made their they made competition in the secondary during the bye week. Nobody's starting job was safe. So maybe that woke some people up. They are down. Um, I think Anthony Switzer is out. Mm-hmm. Um, Jalen Braxton is not going to be available. So right. they're down a couple guys, too. Selman Bridge is the freshman, which uh-huh. you're at that point of the year yeah. where you might play some of those guys because they'll be able to keep their red shirt. Um, so I, that's the number one. They got to improve in the secondary. It's basically been open auditions this week, right? In the secondary or over the last two weeks? Yeah, pretty much. And it's 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 just an you know maybe if they had a different team coming after this bye week, I'd feel a little bit more confident in them showing some improvement. It's just it's hard to imagine them. Th- I think they're still going to have some issues against Texas. Texas has just got an elite. Um, and I think with Texas, it's going to be less of the downfield shots. It's going to be tackling on the perimeter and yep. keeping them from yep. turning those short gains into big games. Um, but Arkansas has really struggled. We've brought this up a lot of times against the veteran quarterbacks, and they've got one coming to town this week. Well, I said this early in the week, and I think you mentioned Mississippi State, where they killed Arkansas was on the screens. Pittman was was really frustrated with how they tackled against Mississippi State, and that's how Texas is going to attack you more more often than not now. Texas, they're also going to hit some deep shots off of the threat of throwing those screens. You know, they might fake it to a guy, and then they've got a tight end running wide open down the seam. That wouldn't surprise me at all to see a, a play like that tomorrow. But uh, it's it's th- they're going to challenge Arkansas, I think, in a way they haven't been challenged before. Because Mississippi State, yes, they had some similar concepts on offense, but they didn't have the athletes that Texas had. Or, or has, and, and I think that's really the, the, the thing that stands out to me most about watching Texas is that it's the motion, it's the misdirection, it's the speed on the edge. Uh, you know, we were talking to Brett Dolan about this the other day. Yeah, he called their game against Florida the other day, and, and he'll call it on, uh, on Saturday here in Fayetteville. He said that they don't really have much of a running game, but they don't need it because they use those, those screen passes, those little quick passes out into flats like a running game. Uh, and I think that's where Arkansas is going to get challenged. I don't know of a team that has challenged Arkansas in as many ways as I think Texas will challenge them. Arkansas was able to take away the deep passes against LSU. And like you mentioned, LSU just, you know, it was like death by a thousand cuts with those little seven, eight, nine yard hitch routes. Um, I think Texas is going to take some shots. I, I don't think Ole Miss really, you know, they didn't do a whole lot of six yards in last week passing or a couple of weeks ago passing wise. Texas is going to do that, but they're also going to try to, to beat them vertically like Ole Miss did. And uh, th- this defense is going to have to be on its toes on Saturday because it, it could get ugly fast if, if Texas offense clicks as well as I think it can. Yeah, they've got to – it's got to be the best defensive performance I think we've seen yet. Yeah, it, it's going to have to be good. Quinn Ewers is really good for Texas, their junior quarterback. Uh, he had an oblique injury earlier this year in which Arch Manning had to come in and, and play for him. And then when Ewers came back, uh, he wasn't as good because I think the oblique was still affecting him. He was able – I was listening to some people talk about his game the other day, and he was able to throw passes better downfield than I think he has been since he suffered that injury. And so they're kind of getting that deep threat back, I, I feel like, uh, more so than what they've had the last few weeks. I don't think you can talk about Texas without talking about their line play. And it's not just offensive line, it's defensive line. They've got probably, you know, at least eight defensive linemen who they can rotate where, you know, they don't look a whole lot different when the second team comes on the field and the first team goes off. And, and that's what you want it to look like. I mean, you think about a lot of the, the really great teams, that's what they look like is that their defensive line is really deep and there's not a lot of drop-off from the starter to the second guy, and they're able to rotate them so nobody ever gets that tired. Uh, so I think you've got a little bit of that with Texas. I think their offensive line is very good. They were announced, I think, this week as one of the semifinalists for the Joe Moore Award. And I'll tell you, one of the players who I'm really interested in watching on Saturday is their tackle, Kelvin Banks. Uh, there's there's talk that he could be a top-10 pick in the NFL draft. And, you know, as a Heisman voter, I always try to – it's easy to focus on the quarterbacks and the running backs and the receivers. It, 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 that's real easy. I like to try to get my eyes and, and watch guys who I think are really good at some of these you know, sp- positions that don't get as much sign, the tackles, the linebackers, the, the nose guards, the safeties. And I'm really interested in watching him on Saturday and, 
Uh, the, the, the expectation for me is that he's going to be the best tackle I've seen in person this year. But I'm, 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 I'm really excited to see him in person and, and potentially see some one-on-one -on -one battles between him and Landon Jackson. Yeah, I was about to say that's going to be a great matchup. It's kind of funny. This is a – Landon Jackson's little brother, Lance, is committed to Texas. That's They're right. from yep. Texarkana. And it's going to be a good, uh, you know, NFL prospect type of battle there. Is, I mean, assuming that they'll be mad. I'm, I would guess that that's probably – going to have some one-on-ones there um but yeah i would think I, I would think that you there's no way you can really avoid that yeah it's gonna I with the like way you move your defensive lineman around you're, you're going to be facing yeah. guys on both sides yeah for sure we'll see um you know how i think that that's a key i didn't write this in the keys but i think arkansas has got to get some pressure on yours for sure yeah. um it's just if whenever your secondary is struggling like the way that it has i feel like that that's how you can compensate for it a little bit is speed up the quarterback a little bit and We'll see if they can do it. I mean, that's it, it's always lost on when you talk about teams are struggling in pass defense. So much of the emphasis gets put on the back seven, when in reality it's the front four, maybe the front five, depending on how you use the defense. Front seven, it's it, it, there's a there's a responsibility for those players to get pressure on the quarterback because if you're an SEC quarterback, you're good enough to pick people apart if you've got a pocket. The key, the whole key to this thing is making those quarterbacks uncomfortable. And that's what Arkansas – they didn't do that against Nussmeyer. Uh, they didn't really do that against Michael Van Buren, uh, maybe save for a couple of plays. And certainly they didn't do that two weeks ago against Jackson Dart. Yeah. And they, the and they were able to do that earlier in the year. Yeah. And the first half against Jackson Dart, th I felt like they were getting him to roll out a little bit and potential – sacks or whatnot but then he would just he was just so elusive and 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 i feel like after he got going with this like throwing on the run a little bit <laughs> then this pocket started getting clean he was so comfortable he just yeah if you gave him anything he was just picking arkansas apart he was i mean so much emphasis gets put on how poorly arkansas played defensively but man jackson dart was on too i mean he was not missing and They've got, they've got to make a quarterback uncomfortable because I think Quinn Ewers has the ability to do the exact same thing. We've got Steve Sarkeesian's thoughts on the Razorbacks. Uh, we'll play for you here in just a second. First, want to tell you that you can get the latest breaking news on all Razorback sports at wholehogsports.com. We think it's the most in-depth source for all of our Arkansas sports analysis, latest in recruiting from Richard Davenport, unique stories on all your favorite teams. You can subscribe today at wholehogsports.com. also want to tell you that if you're watching our podcast, there's an audio version on Apple and Spotify. Just search Whole Hog Sports. Or if you're listening to us right now and you want to see a video version, uh, see Ethan's beautiful face here uh, every other morning, you can uh, you can search YouTube for Whole Hog Sports. Search YouTube Whole Hog Sports, and uh, you'll find our video podcast. Hope you get a rating on our podcast, preferably a good one, uh, but it'll help other people uh, find our show. This is what Steve Sarkeesian had to say earlier in the week about the Razorbacks and playing in Arkansas. We've got a heck of a challenge going to Arkansas here Saturday. Um, we, we all know about the, the rivalry and, and what it means to the University of Texas, what it means to, to Arkansas. Uh, you know, Last time we went there, things didn't go so well for us, so hopefully we can put a, a better, foot forward, uh, better foot forward against them in, in this ball game. They've got a good football team. They're big. They're physical. They're built like most SEC teams. Um, they've got a very explosive offense with the run game and the pass game. They've got a big physical front. Um, they've got a defensive end who's going to be a first-round draft pick in Jackson. So uh, we've got our work cut out for us, but, but I like the mentality of the team already here Monday morning um, with, with them understanding, yeah, that was a good game for us Saturday, but there's more work to be done. You know what I love about coaches is that they have, a, they have an ability to make every opponent sound like it's going to be a national championship worthy contender yeah. see i didn't cover the team back i was a student back in the chad morris days and i've actually been curious to go back and listen to how did coaches oh. talk about his team okay i wish i wish we had this queued up sydney because sydney our, our producer and i were talking about this this morning uh when lsu when lsu beat arkansas in 19 uh at ogeron uh he said uh, there was no celebrating being Arkansas. They hadn't been anybody in a long time. Oh and boy! So, you know, they, it got people's feathers ruffled at that time. But I mean, it was it was like the the most sincere answer I think that I've ever heard from a coach. <laughs> That's funny to hear that after a game. I'm curious before a game though, because like you got to do the whole thing of like you don't want to look like you're overlooking a team. And I just would be curious to hear how coaches went about like a you know how did Nick Saban preview Arkansas back then. When he met with media, um, was he just like, I don't even know. It just 
Yeah. I think most of Nick Saban's press conferences were like sleep stories. <laughs> okay. Quite well, frankly. Well, how I had this, did, uh, do you have the Calm app? I do not. I get ads for it all the time. And See, I we have it. So we, I think we did like a trial, and then our kids loved it, and, and we've never gotten rid of it. We, we renew it every year. And so they've got all these different sleep stories on there. And um, am I making you tired? You're you yawning. You made me sleepy, You're yeah. You're yawning as I'm telling you the story. Yeah. Um, and so, but I mean, it's just, you know, people, they, they read to you, and they, in this very monotone, low-key kind of voice, and it goes on for 35, 40 minutes. And you eventually fall asleep. Yeah, that that would not make me go to sleep. That oh, it makes, makes me go to sleep. That just makes me want to go, I don't know. There's one There's one story on there that makes me go to sleep. Uh, like, it's, 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 it is a... It's fail proof. <laughs> I, I go to sleep. Here's where I'm going with this. I was thinking as I was listening to the SEC coaches teleconference the other day, just record that for two and a half hours and just play it and you'll go right to sleep. Yeah. I Bob, mean the Bob listens to the whole thing every week. Bob has spent maybe five years of his life on LC- combined on SEC coaches teleconferences. You're not wrong. He listens to the whole thing. Yeah, I mean these things go for, you know, three hours. <laughs> It's it's insane, but anyway, I mean, nobody has any enthusiasm on there. Nobody talks like this right here. I mean, it's just, uh, <laughs> it it just listening to it in real time when I'm working, I want to put my head down on the desk yeah. and go to sleep. I'd love and so to I can only imagine how it would be if I'm listening to that at like nine thirty at night in the dark. I'd love to rank our SEC coaches based on how boring they are on that thing because there are some real front runners. I mean, Kirby. Yeah, Kirby is a snoozer on there. I mean, uh, Billy Napier is pretty. <laughs> yeah, he's he's rough. Uh, th- there are a few that wake you up a tiny bit. Like Jimbo used to wake you up it's because it was like you went down to the Scott County auction, and I mean, yeah. I mean it. That guy, nobody has ever, nobody in the history of the world has spoken as many minutes as Jimbo Fisher. Sam Sam Pittman's one of the more entertaining ones on there for sure. Um, but, oh, boy, it is hard to J- – Josh uh, Heupel, pretty boring. Yeah. I mean – I almost think there's like a little bet between all of them. How boring can we be? <laughs> like, like how, how can we make these reporters' lives any more miserable than just listening well, to us say the same old cliches in a monotone voice and – you know, filibuster our way through this 10 minutes. Well, even the moderator, next we've got Arkansas coach Sam Pittman. The Hogs play Texas this week. <laughs> coach Pittman, could you pl- take a few minutes to talk about your team's game against the Longhorns? Yeah. And then, yeah, it's it's even the, the whole script for setting it up. It is just, whew. I, I'll, listen to, I'll listen to Sam Pittman's 10 minutes, and then I've had enough. We're sitting on a gold mine. We need to record the whole two and a half hours, create an app, and we will put kids to sleep <laughs> across the world. Yeah, and we'll be rich. Well, I don't know about bit. that, but <laughs> we'll do our best. <laughs> I guess. Um, but yeah, no, I, uh, I definitely don't. Uh, I don't envy these these coaches that you know. That's the, probably the last thing that they want to do is hop on the SEC coaches teleconference every yeah. week. But they do it <clears> for <throat> their ten minutes every time. Anyway, Sarkeesian, he makes Arkansas sound like a heck of a team right there. Uh, and, and maybe they are. I mean, or do you think we're missing something about this Arkansas team? Because I just I I am very lukewarm on them right now. I'm not I'm not too down on them because I do recognize that they have had some success in the SEC that they have not had. Uh, they they certainly didn't have last year. And you know we'll see, I, I think they got a chance to go to Missouri and win. I oh, really do. Yeah. So you know they could end up four and four. How many Arkansas teams have gone four and four in the SEC? That that's a good year in the SEC for Arkansas from from if, if you just look at it from where Arkansas has been as a program if you can get to four and four in the SEC that's not a bad year but I'm not real high on them either it's like I, I feel like there are games where you know the I think they got a chance against Missouri like I said but I also feel like when they play the really elite teams and I know they beat Tennessee but again I based on what I saw against LSU based on what I saw against Ole Miss I just don't feel like if you just line it up and there are no turnovers and it's just kind of a, a normal game on Saturday, give me Texas 10 times out of 10. Yeah. My thing is I think that, you know, you can't ever overlook a team that this at this juncture of the season is 500 in SEC play, especially if they've beaten a team that's in the college football playoff picture right now. I mean, you gotta you got to sell that this is a team that – 
that you got to look out for. But I also think if you're looking at it from Texas's perspective, they don't – I mean, they know good and well looking at the season, how the season's gone for a lot of teams that they've played, that they haven't – this is one of the better teams that they have played. It, they haven't it, been it, a ranked team yet. Yeah, and Arkansas's – I mean, if you're lining up rank the teams that Texas has played, including Arkansas to this point, um, who's the most dangerous? Arkansas, I think, has to be up there near the very I mean, top. Vander, Vanderbilt – Georgia's the best team they play. Yeah, Georgia, and, and there's won. no doubt about that. Then you got Vanderbilt, Michigan, Arkansas. I feel from like. from from a standpoint of like, who have they beaten? Their best wins over Vanderbilt. That, yeah. That's a to me that's a better win than over Michigan this year, because Michigan. I mean, what are they five and five right now? Yeah, I, I've They're, stopped keeping I mean, up with this, them. This <laughs> isn't. If you put Michigan and Vanderbilt on the field right now, who do you think would win that game? Oh, Vandy. I'd give Vanderbilt a very good chance yeah. to win the game. I don't know if they would win it, but I would give them a good chance to win. But, yeah, all that to say, I don't think that – I mean, if you're looking at it from Texas's perspective, like, this is one of the best teams that you've played. You better be ready for them because you haven't really played much of anybody, to be honest. Like, Georgia – and Georgia was – in my opinion, maybe a little bit of a wake-up call because that was the first really good t- – I mean, I, I think Oklahoma gave them some – Oklahoma does present a few challenges, but that's not the same Oklahoma team that we're used to seeing. Um, but Georgia was the first team that they went against the, that I think just really demanded Texas bring their a, their a game, and they didn't. Well, in, in Texas, it's not like they are a team that's just been barely getting by. I mean, they, these have been very impressive scores. What was Vanderbilt? I think it was a one-score game, right? That was a three-point game. And that's another thing I think about. And, and that was with Vanderbilt scoring a touchdown very late in that game to because I think it had been a ten-point game up until. Y- yeah, but it was, it was close throughout, though. Well, Vanderbilt had a little – Texas got up, Vanderbilt came back, and, yeah. and they they were never totally out of it, but they were never really threatening to win it either. I think that's probably the way I would say, uh, say about that Vanderbilt game. But otherwise, they beat Oklahoma by 31. They beat Michigan by 19. Look what they did to Florida uh, last week. They beat them by 32. Yeah. And so they're they're really whipping these teams. And and so, yes, they haven't played anybody, but there's really no reason to think that they're they're just kind of getting by. They're not like a Missouri that's pulling a rabbit out of their hat to beat some of the worst teams in the conference. Yeah. They're they're really whipping <coughs> up on a lot of these teams. I do think that this is going to be one of those games. That we, I don't think Taylor Green's going to be at 100% mobility to be able to get around against Texas. I just don't. And I would I, – I look back on the LSU game and I wonder had Taylor Green – I mean, they made it clear they weren't running in that game much. And LSU really struggles against running quarterbacks. And then I think Texas hasn't really played much of a running quarterback threat yet. Diego Pavia is probably the best one, and he had – almost he had 70 yards against him in a touchdown so I'd be curious how if, if Taylor Green was fully healthy if maybe uh, the running quarterback could could play a factor into maybe I, I just wonder what Texas really struggles with because mm. that's what's hard to identify right now is what is is there something out there that's going to be the thing that Texas really struggles with and the running quarterback I think could maybe that could be it but we just I don't think we'll know on Saturday because I don't think I expect Taylor Green to be in kind of the same situation he was for that LSU game where they're keeping him, trying to keep him in the pocket, which Mm -hmm. that in itself, you look at the Texas defense, and, I mean, they have the by far the best secondary in the nation. Um, And I think it's because of that defensive front that can get to the quarterback. I think Trevor Etienne had a pretty good game against Texas uh, for Georgia uh, in the game that the Bulldogs won down there in Austin. So you wonder about Jaquindon Jackson being back if the Arkansas offensive front can handle that big – because it's, it, this is not Georgia's offensive line now. But but if they can handle some that Texas defensive front, uh, if maybe Jaquindon Jackson being back, he's a former Longhorn, you know, he's going to be motivated. Uh, maybe he can have a little bit of success. We'll see. we got a lot more to go today on our podcast, but first a word from our sponsor. Want to enjoy your life again? Burning, numbness, and general pain in your feet and legs might be keeping you from your daily activities. Neuropathy treatment can be effective to restoring your life. Come see what we can do at Enhanced Healthcare Wellness Institute in Uptown Rogers. We can treat your neuropathy pain and get you back in the game of life. Enhanced Healthcare Wellness Institute is located at 5102 West Pauline Whitaker Parkway in Uptown Rogers. At Kendall King, we're proud of over four decades of design. We're continuing the legacy of great creative design by combining our brands of Kendall King, Soapbox, and Shopcart. Together, these brands represent a new focus in marketing design with individual attention to specific areas. Through our design expertise supported by a team of talented professionals, we showcase our best. We are Kindle King, we are Soapbox, we are Shopcart, 
We are design. Welcome back. I want to tell you about our friends at Enhanced Healthcare Wellness Institute. They are your source for holistic wellness and your healthy lifestyle changes. Located in Uptown Rogers, the staff at Enhanced Healthcare will target your specific health plan for wellness from neuropathy treatment, primary care, weight loss, and so much more. You can count on the experts at Enhanced Healthcare Wellness Institute in Rogers. What are you, what are you looking at? Like, like you're, you're like having a, you're, you're looking at my paper real weird there. I was just, I was very curious to hear more about Enhanced <laughs> uh, Healthcare Wellness Institute. And I, I had They're never, right there in your neck of the woods. They are. They're very close to me. You should go visit you them. You could walk to their office. Yeah. Uptown Rogers. Yeah, it's very close to me. I was just, I had never seen you read a reader. And I was inter- i was interested to see if you actually read it verbatim or if you kind of did your own thing ever. But I you're you, a verbatim guy. I got the, well, I will, I will ad lib sometimes. I've got the H and the W uh, underlined here because the first time I did this, we actually had to take, we had to do, and then I'm talking about several weeks ago. Uh, I said wealth care hellness, <laughs> and I didn't think they would appreciate that very much. So healthcare wellness sounds much better. But I've got to I've got to underline the W and the H. Pl- <laughs> please don't. P- p- please stay with us. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You were, I, anyways, I'm sorry. I was being observant. You were at the women's basketball game last night. Arkansas beat Texas Arlington pretty handily. The second quarter, they scored 36 points in the second quarter, and it was one off of a school record for most points in a quarter. Yeah, they caught fire. They did what, let me tell you, a Mike Neighbors team, if they catch fire, forget about it. You are you got no answer because they're just shooting threes and threes and threes, and if they're going in and they're shooting them like they did last night, you have a big mountain to climb to try and come back in a game. So they, yeah, they, they torched them in the second quarter and it's crazy because they they were losing the game going into it and then all of a sudden you look up and they're up 24 going Mm. into half and these are 10 minute quarters like i mean if you score 36 points in 10 minutes against another d1 team and this this team was picked third in the whack it's not like uh, which i don't know how people view the whack but i mean any of these mid-major conferences if you finish in the top three you're usually you're or predicted in the top three you're not like a pushover but Arkansas definitely caught fire and made them look uh made them look a lot worse than I think they might be if you score 36 points and a half you, you feel decent about the way you played and this is 36 points and a half of a half yeah exactly it was insane and that's what I'm saying a Mike neighbors team with the way that they play if they start seeing the ball go in like that very dangerous it's that's just and this team's a way better shooting team than I saw the past two years they can really shoot the ball it's just a matter of if they're going to get open have they played teams that can defend um i mean little because rock, they're going to when they get into the meat of their schedule that's what little rock does that's what i'm saying this is a team that um I, i'm curious to see if they'll be able to stay o- mm-hmm. get open once the gate the, the the competition gets tougher but you can't i mean they played teams like this the past two years and they were never shooting 13 of 25 from three-point range um they're at think 38 percent from three on the year which is top five in the sec this izzy higginbottom she's pretty good and she, she's she really 29 good. last night she had 24 after halftime against little rock on monday night uh kind of felt like she kind of single hair single handedly carried them through the overtime period uh the, she, she's got the potential to be really good and it seems like she and kiki smith the junior college uh guard who's coming here from hutchinson uh they 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 seem to play well off of each other. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Izzy is 12th in the nation right now in scoring, um, averages 23 and a half a game. Um, n- knew it coming into into the season whenever she was at Arkansas State that she was going to be, you know, just looking at this team's composition, you knew she'd be the leading scorer. But it's, it's going to be interesting to see how she has to adapt her game throughout the year, maybe a little bit, because teams are going to start, especially once SEC play begins, they're going to start really honing in on her. But Kiki Smith, the JUCO transfer you mentioned, she can really shoot the three. Um, she's a good compliment to her. And then Jenna Lawrence, the uh, who's from, uh, she's from Melbourne, Arkansas, but she graduated mm-hmm. from Farmington. She she's been playing really well too. Has three double doubles already. So, so the women play at UCLA. They're number five on is it Sunday in Los Angeles? Yes, is that right? Sunday, six thirty p.m. Central. Central time. Yep. So, Big Ten Network. Uh, that's a. I 
not many teams in the nation are beating UCLA. And it's this Arkansas team, their thing right now, they really got to improve defensively, and that's a tough, tough matchup. So it's, it's a good gauge to see because Arkansas, they're picked to finish last in the SEC. This is a good gauge to see just exactly where they are against the, the elite of elite teams. For sure. I mean, and they're going to be playing a, a center in Lauren Betts for UCLA that she's, I mean, she might be the best in the nation. And it's that's going to be a tough task for them. Um, Sunday, I, I think what I'm mainly going to be watching for is if they can show some improvement defensively. And then if they can find a little bit of offense against a good team like that, um, because, like I said, it's it's one thing mm-hmm. to be making shots against um, UT Arlington. It's another to be making them against UCLA and getting open to make them. So uh, we'll be interested to look at and see how they do in that game. So congratulations are in order, by the way, to Arkansas cross-country teams. They both won the South Central Regional this morning down at uh, College Station, and they both beat Texas by one point. How about that? Uh, the women, and they both beat them by the same score, but the women – them getting through and, and getting a top two place in the regional, I think, was a little bit of an upset because they haven't they haven't had as good of a year as they typically have. Uh, they have had some runners who are out; they're getting healthy, uh, but they end up winning this regional. Uh, Paitlin No was the number one finisher for the Razorback women, so they will advance to the NCAA championships, which are going to be in a couple of weeks up in uh, up in Madison. And uh, so, uh, congratulations uh, to them. Of course, the Razorback men, number three in the uh, in the regional, or number three in the nation, as they get ready to go uh, up to the NCAA's soccer. NCAA soccer tonight. Razorbacks play Oklahoma State over at Razorback Field. Uh, this is a we talked about it with Anthony a little bit earlier this week. Kind of a surprising matchup uh, between these teams. Uh, the fact that Oklahoma State was number thirty-one RPI. It's going to be a cold night here in Fayetteville. So. Uh, cold soccer, I feel like that can uh, affect things a little bit, Ethan. I mean, I would love to be able to chime in better on this. I've never kicked a soccer ball in my life. You've so. never kicked a soccer ball. I think I actually. How did you did make it through fourth grade PE? We we didn't have any. We didn't have soccer at my school. I mean, we didn't we didn't play soccer. I I I could not tell you how the weather affects a soccer game. All I know is I <laughs> I enjoy watching this Razorback team play soccer because they play a, a, a I am a basketball guy. And they play a style that I that I like watching because they really press the team. It's like a basketball. Full it's like court forty press. minutes of hell. Yeah, and and I enjoy watching them do that. Um, so maybe I don't know. I I could not tell you how the weather impacts you know impacts anything with soccer. Mm-hmm. But I know they played well in the past when it's been cold outside here. And the uh, I'm trying to remember. There's like some game it was freezing outside. I think they might have played Memphis. And I was played. at a Memphis game that was very cold. Yeah, and covering they, it. they they won in like the extra kicks or something. Uh, uh, that uh, they I may have, well they may have played them twice here. I remember the the first time they hosted a postseason game here in Fayetteville was 2016. So maybe you're thinking of something more recent. Yeah. But in 16, they scored a goal in the 89th minute. Arkansas did to force overtime, and then they got a golden goal early in overtime to to win the game. So. Uh, Never know what you're going to get in postseason soccer. But this is a tough first-round game for Arkansas. But if they can get by this, they get uh, another home game uh, next week, and we'll see. Maybe they can get to the College Cup. They're, they're trying to get there for the first time. Got to make a quick correction. The men won big at the South Central Regional this morning. They had uh, they beat Texas by quite a bit. Tulane was actually the number two team in that region. So Texas won't even make it to the NCAAs uh, from, a, from a men's standpoint. And uh, in the men's race, Arkansas had the top three finishers in that race led by Karami Yigo. He is the South Central Regional Champion. So congratulations to both cross-country teams. When we come back, our weekend predictions. First, a word from our sponsors. Want to enjoy your life again? Burning, numbness, and general pain in your feet and legs might be keeping you from your daily activities. Neuropathy treatment can be effective to restoring your life. Come see what we can do at Enhanced Healthcare Wellness Institute in Uptown Rogers. We can treat your neuropathy pain and get you back in the game of life. Enhanced Healthcare Wellness Institute is located at 5102 West Pauline Whitaker Parkway in Uptown Rogers. At Kendall King, we're proud of over four decades of design. We're continuing the legacy of great creative design by combining our brands of Kendall King, Soapbox, and Shopcart. Together, these brands represent a new focus in marketing design with individual attention to specific areas. Through our design expertise supported by a team of talented professionals, we showcase our best. We are Kendall King, we are Soapbox, we are shop cart. We are design. Hey, welcome back.
back. I want to tell you about our friends at Bentonville Glass. They've been serving their community since 1971. They are committed, professional, and versatile. If you're looking for a quality leader in northwest Arkansas or looking for skilled craftsmanship, look no further than Bentonville Glass for all your glass market needs with the highest quality products. You can come by and see them right now at 507 South Main in Bentonville or online at bentonvilleglass.com. Did you know that there is not a week this year in 14 weeks of SEC football where you have eight games of SEC versus SEC. It doesn't happen at any point in time this year. I hate that. I don't like I don't like these these <laughs> weeks where we have just random sprinkled in non conference games. Non conference games. So Ohio, uh, Florida was the team that started this. I almost said Ohio State, but Florida when Urban Meyer was their coach, they started this where they would schedule somebody in that weekend before Thanksgiving because they wanted to rest their players up for the Florida State game at the end of the year. And now everybody does this. I mean, it, I, I call them strategically placed non-conference games. There's four of them this week. There's four of them next week. Arkansas is doing it uh, with Louisiana Tech this year. They did it last year with FIU. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of it. But there, there's no week this year where every SEC team is going to play in a game against every other SEC team. And it's kind of interesting how that works out. It also, Ethan, it kind of waters down the the offering, I feel like, here late in the year where, you know, I mean, you got Alabama against Mercer and Texas A&M against New Mexico State and uh, Kentucky against Murray State. Uh, there's four SEC games. All of them have playoff ramifications. Uh, but it's it's not that typical kind of meaty SEC schedule like we're used to seeing. Yeah, but knowing you and how much you love just any level of football. I mean, Matt's going to be watching Murray State, Kentucky. I'm, I'm from not. I am not. From buzzer to buzzer, I mean, he's going to be and he's going to be enjoying that one. Uh, I, I did see a heck of a junior high conference championship game last week, though, between Woodland and Central up here. Yeah. Woodland won on a field goal, a 29-yard field goal at the eighth grade level, with 40 seconds left in the game. I mean, an also eighth never grader kicked a football, so I. But I know, I've oh, also okay. never kicked a football, but I know that is really hard to do. I mean, think about an eighth grader kicking a 29-yard field goal in a pressure situation. And the kick that he kicked would have been good from like 35, 40 yards. So, yes, I do enjoy watching football at different levels, but yeah. I'm not going to be watching. Do you have Murray ESPN State Plus? I do. Okay, then you'll be able to watch this one. I will be watching it. Uh, yes, I know. I'm going to spend will. most of my day at Razorback Stadium with the, uh, with the Razorbacks and the Longhorns tomorrow. So, <laughs> And then I think once I get home, I'll be watching Tennessee, Georgia. Yeah, uh, I'm actually interested to – I know we're about to talk about them, but there's a few games on the SEC schedule that I'm interested in, and Missouri-South Carolina is a, a sneaky good one. Yeah, we'll get to that in just a second. Some games, we won't pick these, but just to, to have uh, – just to be on the lookout for this week, Kansas goes to BYU, and BYU, uh, they like to live on the edge. And KU, you know, they beat Iowa State. Uh, they, they, they've, it's a team that has got maybe a chance to go in there and, and give BYU – a surprising game. It's at 9.15 Central Time, and so maybe BYU will have some more 1 a.m. magic for us. Love these dramatic BYU games whenever my, I'm already half asleep. Oregon goes to Wisconsin, Camp Randall Stadium, obviously always a, a tough place to play. Can't imagine Oregon having a whole lot of trouble there. A lot of people are saying watch out for the Boise State-San Jose State game. San Jose State 6-3, and three. Uh, so a Mountain West Conference game there that has got some playoff ramifications. That's going to be a Saturday night game on CBS Sports Network, uh, continue to look through the schedule. Boston College, uh, they just made a change at quarterback, and then their quarterback said, yeah, I'm not going to stay here anymore, and he entered the transfer portal. They go to SMU. Rhett Lashley's team obviously still in the playoff uh, discussion. Uh, going a uh, little bit further up the board here, Tulane at Navy, a team, uh, Tulane number 25 in the playoff poll, Navy just outside of the playoff poll. Both of those teams have two losses, certainly a game Worth watching. Clemson at Pittsburgh, another one that's going to be an interesting. That'll be on at the same time as the Razorback game Saturday morning. It's an 11 a.m. kickoff on ESPN. And then uh, the big noon kickoff. This is the one I love this Utah week. Utah at Colorado. Utah, obviously, you know, they've they've spent the week crying. And Colorado still, they, they hold all of the cards. If Colorado wins out, they're in the playoff and, and probably has a top four seat. Yep, this is a game that I am I would love. I hate that it's at the same <coughs> time as Arkansas-Texas because I'm really interested in this one. I think Colorado might struggle with the the, the the really physical teams, and I would be – I just think this 
I think that this might be where Colorado's playoff dreams go to die. I wonder what the weather is for that game in, in Boulder. Yeah, well, and because this time of year, you never know what you're going to get there. The thing is, on these, whenever whenever Colorado plays these teams, where it's really, it ends up being just skill versus skill. Colorado wins like every time. But yeah, sunny and breezy, no <laughs> snow. <dark laughs> on it. Watch out for the Utes in this one, man. It, it, it wouldn't surprise me to see Utah yeah. win that game, and that's kind of a that's kind of one of those under the radar type rivalries. Uh, Utah and Colorado. It's it's become a, a nice little Two rivalry. Two beautiful states. Yeah, I mean, since they be, they were in the Pac-12 together, and now they've gone back to the Big 12 together. But that's uh, it, it's 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 a fun game. I don't think those teams like each other uh, very much. All right, SEC games this weekend. We will start with the Saturday night game. LSU is on the road, or I'm sorry, this is an afternoon game. LSU 2:30 game on ABC on the road going to Florida, Florida. They may get DJ Lagway back this week, or they may be starting the Yale transfer again at quarterback. Yeah, I've got LSU. I think that what happened to them last week was probably pretty embarrassing. I've listened to a lot of fine bomb this week. I know I said this Wednesday. Their fans are embarrassed. <laughs> they're angry. They're upset. They're mad. They they want to get that taste out of their mouth, and I think they'll do it against Florida. Alex from Alexandria upset. Uh, yeah. So is a uh, you know a lot of Cajun names yeah. from. A lot of Cajun-sounding cities. What if Ed Hogeron called into the Fine Bombs <laughs> show just just to act like one of the fans? I w- just it would be great. Like, do you think they would be able to figure out, hey, this is him, or do you think they would just? <laughs> oh, I was just, it's just a tiger. <laughs> just a tiger. Just a tiger. Uh, LSU is a three and a half point favorite. Yeah, I think they win. They, they've got their backs against the wall. LSU does. They've lost two in a row. Uh, they've still got the playoff hopes. They've got three losses, and they've got a clear, yeah, somewhat clear path to the. Uh, to the playoff, if they can win the the tiebreaker as a two loss SEC team, they could get into the championship game. They could win the SEC championship game. I don't think they will, but but that's what they're uh, they they've still got hope, and that's what the twelve team playoff does is it gives a lot of team hopes uh, throughout the season. Three fifteen kickoff. This is the one you were talking about. Missouri ranked number twenty three by the playoff committee this week. South Carolina ranked number twenty one. South Carolina is a thirteen and a half point favorite in this game. Yeah, and it's crazy because I think that is low. I think that Williams Bryce Stadium is Willie B. It's a very hard place to play. Missouri, I think, is still going to have their backup quarterback Pine, mm. um, and South Carolina has a really good pass rush. Like I think this could be ugly, ugly, ugly. Um, I I'm anticipating this to take a similar form to that Missouri. Texas A&M game down in College Station earlier this year where you know very quickly into the mm-hmm. game that there's mm-hmm. what the Missouri's pretty fraudulent. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. Brady Cook doubtful for the game, the quarterback for Missouri. I love what Rocket Sanders is doing right now at South Carolina. He's having a heck of a year. And there's so much emphasis on what he's doing running the ball, but they are getting him involved in the passing game. Remember, he came to Arkansas. You didn't know if he was going to be a receiver or a running he back. He was just an athlete. And you know, he's still an athlete. Well, I mean, that was <laughs> the, his I position. I know what you mean. Yeah. But uh, you know, Rocket. I mean, he is he's really firing on all cylinders right he's now. He's having for them an the last all SEC weeks. type of year, he really and it's is. I you I, I like to see it for him. He's they. It also looks whenever you watch their games, they've like trimmed him down again. But for last season, before he got hurt in the first game and stuff, I was just thinking, you know, it's really bold to just <laughs> he was having already so much success at Arkansas with how he was already kind of built, and they really got him bigger. And but Williams Bryce is a tough place to play. Yeah. In November, I don't know what the, what it is, but Tennessee went there a couple of years ago. A uh, and M went there obviously earlier this year. Um, they they Beamer has a good team in November. Uh, he, he really does, and I think South Carolina uh, wins this one pretty easily. I don't know thirteen and a half. Yeah, I, I can see that. Uh, Tennessee ranked number seven in the playoff poll goes to Georgia, ranked number twelve, but out if the playoffs were to start today. The Bulldogs are a nine and a half point favorite in this game. Nico Iamaliava is questionable, and I'm still going with Tennessee. I know that's really? a, I know that's really bold, um, but I just I really like. Um, I, I it's more or less for me right now the feeling around Georgia than it is Tennessee. I think Tennessee's kind of done that thing where you survive a lot. Um, they they've played some closer than comfort games, but I feel like they're just. They're, they're that team that's figuring out a way to get it done, and I, I don't know. I I struggled with this game because I just am not sold on Georgia at all this year, and I think Tennessee in that defense has a chance to give them trouble. Well, Tennessee's got the number one ranked defense in the SEC on our efficiency ratings, and the efficiency ratings say to take Tennessee. And I didn't trust my gut last week when the efficiency ratings said take Ole Miss, and I said I'm, I'm going to go with Georgia. I'm still going to push all of my chips in with Georgia one more time this year. 
Uh, they're at home. Their backs are against the wall. Uh, Tennessee, like we said, their quarterback situation uh, is is a little bit questionable going into this game. I just feel like we haven't seen the, the best Georgia team yet, and I, I feel like there's something in there uh, that, that can pull it out of them. Tennessee, you realize this is their first road game since they went to Fayetteville? Wow. First road, and they haven't played great on the road this year. Uh, they 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 kind of suffocated OU. It was like watching a, a boa constrictor go to work, what they did over in Norman. But then they didn't play well here against Arkansas. Georgia in this series has won the last seven games by an average of 26 and a half points. Tennessee's got a problem with Georgia. They've got a Georgia hurdle that they haven't quite been able to get over. And now you're asking them to do that in Athens, possibly with a backup quarterback. I'm going with Georgia to win this game. But Again, the efficiency ratings tell me to go with Tennessee. Yeah, my thing is defense usually travels, and I just feel like that Tennessee defense. And, and Georgia – got to score points. Yeah, and I don't think Georgia's – what is the efficiency ratings have Georgia's defense at? Uh, Georgia defensively, I think they're top five. I'm top not five? exactly sure, but I think they're I think they're number five. Yeah, I wonder if those have been padded in some games against, you know, the Mississippi States of the world and stuff. Because Mississippi State actually had a pretty nice game against them. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's, this I don't think this Georgia team is I, – I'm not sold on them. I'm not sold on them. It's, it's certainly at all. not the and same I, I'm not team, necessarily on I, I Tennessee think they either. Win at home. But that defense, I think, will keep them in the game, and I like Tennessee in a close one. That'll be interesting. Tennessee, 26 and a half points over the last seven. And the clo- it's not like there's like a like a 40 point game or a 40 like a bunch of the. It's like everything is the, the closest game in the series in the last seven years has been 14 points. The last time Tennessee won, by the way, was the Butch Jones. Uh, Josh, he was coaching them, and Josh Dobbs threw the hail mary on the last play of the game, and. Burn about falls out of the, the press box on CBS. And uh, you take that game away, I mean, the the, law, the the losing streak to Georgia would be really long for Tennessee. That's the only bright spot. And obviously that took uh, a little bit of divine intervention for that to happen. Uh, that was in 2016. Tennessee hasn't been close to Georgia since then. Finally, Texas and Arkansas, I think you know where we're going to go with this. Texas 8-1 and one overall, 5-4-1 and, and one in the SEC. Arkansas 5-4, 3-3. and four, three and three. The Longhorns are a 13-point favorite. We both know we're going to pick Texas to win this game. Ethan, you think they cover? You mean you, you're not even going to give me a chance to pick the Razorbacks to well, win? Well, if you want a chance, the well, floor is yours. Oh, it's not happening. Um, All right, I'm okay. taking the floor back. Yeah, okay, here's the floor. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I, they're favored by 13? Yes. I think that they cover. I think the Texas Longhorns cover this game. Um I don't know like what else to say other than I just don't think Arkansas's defense is where it should be at right now. And I, I think that at this juncture of the season, it, it reminds me of remember last year down the stretch, how what happened with the defense. This is the mm-hmm. second year in a row that we're kind of seeing this trend happen where they're, they're just losing it at the end of the year. And Arkansas was a favorite to play Auburn late in the year. And Auburn's offense looked like the best in the sec that day. I, I, I think Texas covers. If you're a Razorback fan, I think you've got to be concerned the fact that they're grasping for straws, re-evaluating who your starters are in the secondary this late in the season. Uh, yeah, I think Texas covers. Look, efficiency ratings say Texas is right on the heels of Ole Miss. They're right there on their heels for the best team in the SEC. They're really good offensively. They are really good defensively. Arkansas has been struggling, especially on defense the last few weeks. The offense has taken some steps forward. But I've got my doubts whether or not the offense can can stay in this game against Texas because, again, I think Texas is, is really good defensively and they're, and they're going to give them some challenge uh, this week. I think uh, I think Texas wins. I think they cover. The, the, you know, the question becomes, can Arkansas keep it competitive? Because you know, there's a the difference between if Texas pulls away in the fourth quarter and, and maybe they win by you know, 17 points or, or 15, 20, whatever the case might be, 14. There's a difference in that and the Ole Miss game where the game's been over for two quarters by that point, or even the LSU game where, you know, it's a 14 point game, but it feels a lot, it, it feels a lot more than 14 points. Arkansas, they, and I, I'm, I'm on this, I'm on this soapbox again. They've got to get competitive at home. They need a game. They need a game where they can take it to the fourth quarter and let their crowd have a chance to influence the game because there has not been a chance for them to influence the game the last uh, two games in Fayetteville against LSU and Ole Miss. And quite frankly, there have been way too many games recently. Auburn, Missouri last year, 
kind of the same thing where the, the crowd just has not had the chance to influence the game. They, they, they've got to figure out a way to make this a game after three quarters to, uh, to, to have any chance to beat Texas. Absolutely. And I think that right now, if you're asking me how I think – how I think that they do it, I think that they've got to get pressure on the quarterback early. That's that's, and I know we talked about keys earlier, but I think that that's turnovers, turnovers, and pressure on the quarterback early. I think can set the tone for them staying around. How many turnovers is it outside of Mississippi State and Auburn? Three this year, and I think they've, they've UAB they had an interception late. Um, it's not many. The, the, that's the point. Yeah. It's, it's not many. Maybe three, four turnovers. They had ten total against Auburn and Mississippi State. Otherwise, this hasn't been a team that can force turnovers. they got to figure out a way to force Texas in to make them some mistakes. Hope you'll come to our website throughout the weekend, wholehogsports.com. We'll have plenty of coverage from Razorback Stadium on Saturday when the Razorbacks play the Longhorns. Also, we'll have uh, some basketball coverage this weekend as Arkansas basketball gets ready to get back on the court on Monday. Obviously, soccer going on. It's going to be a busy week here for us at wholehogsports.com. We'll be back on Monday with another podcast. Hope to see you then. Have a great weekend, everyone.